the fastest way to japa <laughs> from your home countries guy make it that it has always been your interest because that is the way to actually buy these people that is the way to buy their hearts their spirit their soul for them to fall madly in love with you do you understand me? so be that if any professor stumbles on it like this <laughs> The person will just be reading and be smiling, reading and be smiling. Like, who is this? Who is this? I, I really want to meet this student. I, I have to meet you. Where are you? Where are you from? I really need to meet you, okay? hello guys how are you doing today i hope everybody is amazing i hope everybody is staying safe i hope everybody is good okay thank you so much for stopping by hitting the play button watching this video right now you know subscribing commenting smashing the like button doing all those good stuff on this platform Thank you so much guys and if you're very new on this platform my name is Ujo KK the intercultural communicator I'm a Nigerian youtuber who lives in United States of America I was an international student I create content about my experiences you know living in USA how I got here I vlog from time to time cooking vlog you know I spice it up but mostly we create educational content on this platform to help people who do want to come to America to study so guys, today's video is going to be an interesting one, okay? The fastest way, you've already seen it from the title of this video, hence you clicked. The fastest way to japa, <laughs> the fastest way to japa from your home country, EFCC, Yoni, japa, <laughs> the fastest way to japa or to leave your home country is to apply to apply or to gain admission into a school in this case i am talking about u.s schools if you know you're tired you want to come to the usa you know the fastest way for you is to gain admission into a u.s school then we can talk about the visa process which i have some videos already on my channel and i'm here to help you too but yeah the fastest way is to apply to come to usa to study be it for your bachelor's be it for your master's your phd that is the fastest way in as much as it is the fastest way you also have to do it right mm -hmm. you heard me right you have to do it right you know some people they feel that some people they feel their gpa is low um they write a standardized test be it um gma gre tofu ielts it is low then they just lose hope they're like oh my god what am i going to do but i am here to tell you that admission decision process is a holistic one right they don't just base it on okay this person's gre is good so come and study or this person's gpa is 4.0 on a 5.0 scale then come and study no that is not how they do it it is a holistic process they get your gre they get your um gpa they get your sop which is a statement of purpose and that is the focus of this video today and i'll be telling you guys why i am focusing on needs today they get a lot of things right where you've worked your resume they combine these things together and they're like okay mr a mr b mrs b all those things those people or this particular individual is a good fit for this program okay for jerry that is a different story altogether because you don't really have much control over it okay you are there writing exam it is timed a lot of things you might forget what you've read you might be tense like a lot of things can jeopardize you getting a good score being in school your gpa might not be so good because you're year one maybe you're still figuring things out you're still hanging out with the boys and the girls and by the time you re realize it sister <laughs> yeah on a 2.0 you start crying but it's already too late and you can't do anything about it so for the statement of purpose which is also a major part of admission decision process you have a lot of control over it ask me why okay i know you've asked let me tell you you are writing it from the comfort of your home it is not timed there is no factor there is no factor in impeding your judgment there is no factor making you not to write a a a stellar a killer sop there is nothing actually if you ask me because let's say you want to apply to so school i went to colorado state university you want to apply to colorado state university and their um, deadline is let's say june 
you already know deadline for admission is june and you know that one of the requirements is statement of purpose come on now you have how many months to write it you have a lot of time to write it you can even give it to people to help you to review it and to do all those good stuff for you so yeah i'll be telling you guys i'll be sharing some key points things for you to keep in mind in order to write a perfect a near perfect sop that if any professor stumbles on it like this <laughs> The person will just be reading and be smiling, reading and be smiling, like, who is this? Who is this? I, I really want to meet this student. I, I have to meet you. Where are you? Where are you from? I really need to meet you, okay? That is, uh, that is an SOP that you should be writing or you should be considering writing. Now, let me tell you some points. The very first point, uh, why I'm sharing this experience is, when I got my admission, right, to be honest with you guys, my GRE wasn't so great. I didn't make like 320, 340, no, I didn't make that great score on my GRE. But my GPA was amazing. Then my SOP2 was amazing because the director of graduates in my department told me that when he read my SOP, he really wanted to meet me. I am in no way bragging, but I just wrote a very good SOP. So that is why I'm sharing these points with you guys. Now, number one. The very first thing I did on my SOP was that I mentioned my research. Did you hear me? I mentioned my research. I talked about my research interest. A lot of people make that mistake. You're just writing blah, 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 blah. You've forgotten that. Okay, I'm speaking from a graduate level SOP perspective. I can't really speak much of what the undergraduate level looks like because I did my undergraduate in Nigeria and I'm the Azikiwe University to be precise. Shout out to all the Zikites in the house. <laughs> Yet, so I am speaking from graduate level perspective. Now, for you to even consider doing graduate school, right, which is master's or PhD, you already have a research interest. And my research interest and focus out of that time was climate change. So I mentioned it in my SOP and I researched my program, I researched my department, I researched my department and told them how I am interested in climate change, how I want to communicate climate change. You know, I really, I specifically said that to them. And I not only did that, I also researched the professors in my department. I found out that one professor had a similar interest. It was not like verbatim, it was not like everything word for word, right? Her research interest was not like, oh, um, let's say, for example, I, Jumwa OKK, is doing, oh, climate change in rural areas, for example. Um, the professor that I saw in my department as of that time was also doing climate change in rural area. No, it was not like that. But there was similarities in our research interest. She was interested in climate change. She was interested in communicating climate change. So I honed on that and I developed it, right? I even went as far as mentioning one of her published article. Did you hear me? I went as far as mentioning her published article. Okay? I was like, oh, this professor, I, I didn't mention her name because I was advised, because this thing, you also have to seek advice. I was advised not to mention her name. I just said, oh, so, so, so professor in this department had published this and um, I love the article. I did this. I just developed it, right? Developing it, please listen. I don't say you should write one page developing it. No, but this is just a sentence. In statement of purpose, you also have to be very concise and make sure you are taking that hammer eh, and hitting it on the nail head. Okay, I developed on that. I talked about her published article. I talked about how the article was amazing. I talked about how I have a similar interest with her. Tell me who wouldn't want to meet me. Because I did my research, not only my research, I went in depth to do that research. A lot of people wouldn't even have the time to start going to say, okay, what article did this professor publish? What did this do? Did, no, you really have to go in depth. So I dug deep. I did my in-depth research, guys. So I'm advising you to do your in-depth research. So when they get to your SOP, they'll be like, okay, these, these things, I did not favor this person. That is like your GPA. Or your um or your standardized test this and this didn't favor this person but this person's sop is nice okay so number one thing that i've talked about is do an in-depth research that is professor who has a similar interest as you try and find out any of that professor's published article and somehow talk about it 
in your in your statement of purpose you might not even go in depth you can just talk about the title the title of the um, article blah 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 this title you know of course they are all in that department they are all colleagues and they definitely know and you might even be lucky that particular professor will be in the committee because there is always admission committee right like people oh like people that are in the committee that will review all your documents that you submit you might even be lucky that particular professor will be in the documents imagine somebody in africa somebody in europe somebody in asia knows about my research and it's not even that this person has gone far in academia this person is just fresh out of um undergraduate you know wants to come and do masters or phd this person is already going far to read about my article who wouldn't be impressed i know you watching me right now would also be impressed so guys do your in-depth research another thing you have to consider while writing a statement of purpose is tell a story you have to tell a story of course you didn't just come out from your mother's womb and say oh you want to go to um colorado state university and go and study civil engineering no that didn't happen there is a story so you have to build on your story just tell them a story how um from childhood this has been your interest how you've actually seen yourself in that part you know doing things that will help you to be a civil engineer you know you just have to tell them the story and now you now want to develop more meaning okay now i now want to do the research aspect of this that is why i'm applying for masters or phd or whatever do you understand what i'm trying to say so yeah tell them the story let them see the pattern that okay this has always been your interest even if it has not been your interest guy make it <laughs> that it has always been your interest because that is the way to actually buy these people that is the way to buy their hearts their spirit their soul for them to fall madly in love with you do you understand me <laughs> that is the way to buy these people so tell them a story and tell them how you have been interested in this particular thing right from childhood or you can twist it and be like okay at some point in your life a particular event happened that made you to be so much interested in this particular thing you get me i hope you're getting what i'm saying yes so tell them let them see that pattern that oh this has been the pattern like from a b c d of course you can't come from a and read z so they want to see that because they want to bring someone in their department into their program that is not tomorrow the person will be like mm, i don't want to do this again i want to go and join mass communication people eh i don't want to do this no 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 they want to bring somebody into their department into their program who actually knows what he or she is getting herself into or himself into do you understand so you need to show them that in your statement of purpose the point is please please guys try and have an error free statement of purpose okay there are some tools out there for you to use and check if you if you have some errors all those things you can give your friends your colleagues anybody you can read it one million at one times that is why i keep saying that statement of purpose you have a great control over it because you have ample of time to read it and read it to revise it to give it to people to help you to read so make sure there are no errors where you're supposed to put full stop put full stop put comma put semicolon title it correctly like do all those good stuff because it wouldn't be nice i am reading your statement of purpose and i am seeing is was they blah blah i'm seeing things that are not supposed to be there it is a great turn off take it from me so try your best and have an error free statement of purpose even the name says statement of purpose meaning you have to do it purposefully <laughs> No, for real, guys. Like the name is statement of purpose. You have to do it purposefully. Trust me. Like you have really, you really have to invest your time and your energy into um, it. Another point to consider, guys, is show your passion. Show your passion in your words. Okay, carry your dictionary. <laughs> carry your dictionary. Do Google search. Use passionate words. You know there are some words that is hum passion. There are some words that when someone is reading it they will know that okay this is coming from the depths of the writer's heart do you understand don't just use like casual words okay i am likely to i usually like some words that are weak some words that doesn't show strength some words that doesn't show confidence you have to use words that show passion confident like 
guy i know what i did do do you understand like i am going to do this and i'm going to give you people the best i am coming into that program to be the best i'm coming into that program to win awards i'm coming into that program to go for conferences and put your department's name and put the school's name in the map in the world's map because come on guys they really want to admit people or someone who because it's is is um it's a two-way traffic kind of deal right they want, them, you, they want you because of some reasons right and you want them because of some reasons they, some of the reasons why they want you is they want somebody that will be going for conferences at least when you go for conference they know okay this particular student is coming from this department that is in this school check their department is already somewhere they've already registered it right they need that visibility they need that awareness for people you know for others to know that other schools to know that okay someone in this department is doing great thing or this particular department is doing great thing you know they are like there is no dull moment like they are not dulling in that department guys like they are not dulling at all at all so guys you really really have to make sure that you have a clear sop so i think these are my points uh, these are the ones that i wrote down if i remember some i'll still put it down if you're a graduate student or international student you're in the usa you watch some of my videos or you watch all of my videos Please, if you have some points, drop it in the comment section for us to help people who are actually on this path and who do want to come here to study, okay? If you have any questions, let me know. Drop it in the comment section. You can reach out to me on my Instagram. It is right there. It's uju underscore media. Send me a DM. I'll do my best to reply. I also have an email, ujuculturemedia, you know, at gmail.com. Send me an email. And I'll be willing to help people too to read their SOP. If I have time, well, I'll do have been helping people, but I would definitely love to help people to read their SOP and chip in my two cents, you know, my one cent. Because the truth is, we all want everybody to succeed because when everyone succeed, the world will be a better place for us. Okay, so yeah, guys, this is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tell me what you think. Drop a positive comment. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thank you so much, guys. Until next time, I love you also very, very much. Bye, guys.